So far, we have talked about the history of hemp and the endocannabinoid system. Now, let's get into the real meat of the subject and talk about the cannabinoids within the endocannabinoid system. There are two classifications for different cannabinoids, whether they are found within the body or outside the body. Those terms are androgenic cannabinoids, which you can see means endo translating to internal, genus means produced, then we have exogenous cannabinoids or externally produced. Androgenous cannabinoids include ananamide, 2-AG, nolden ether, virotamine, and NADA. Examples of exogenous cannabinoids we should be a little bit more familiar with, THC, CBD, CBN, and CBG. All of these examples of androgenous cannabinoids are also phytocannabinoids, phyto meaning it's from a plant. So let's talk about these phytocannabinoids a little bit more. THC or tetrahydrocannabinol in hemp is required to be less than 0.3% when tested. It is the main intoxicating cannabinoid in cannabis. It works on both the CB1 and CB2 receptors. The precursor to THC is THCA. The precursor to THCA is CBGA. THCA can turn into CBNA and THC can turn into CBN, but we'll see a more detailed view on this later. Then we have CBD or cannabidol. It is the main cannabinoid being looked at in a medicinal testing. It is non-intoxicating. It works mainly on the CB2 receptors within the immune system. The precursor to CBD is CBDA, and the precursor to CBDA is CBGA. CBD is also known to reduce some of the negative effects of THC. Next, CBG or cannabigrol. It is the direct precursor to THCA, CBDA, and CBCA. It is non-intoxicating. It binds to both the CB1 and CB2 receptors. It's converted during plant growth by enzymes to create THCA, CBDA, and CBCA. By itself, it can slow bacteria growth and reduce inflammation. Finally, CBN or cannabinol. THC is the precursor to CBN, and THCA is the precursor to CBNA. It is minorly intoxicating. It activates on both the CB1 and CB2 receptors. CBN is said to have sedative qualities, however, this is usually with a combination of other cannabinoids. It reduces inflammation, and it promotes appetite stimulation. This next section, we're going to do a pretty deep dive into the creation of cannabinoids within the cannabis plant as it grows. Some symbols to remember, though, are the blue arrows always means that it is an enzyme synthesis happening, the clock refers to oxidation over time, and the fire is representing decarboxylation. So for the most common cannabinoids that we've seen, it almost always starts out as CBGA or cannabigrolic acid. From here, it can take three main paths using enzymes. It will turn into CBDA, THCA, and CBCA. From here, CBDA can turn into CBD through decarbing, then CBND through oxidation. CBCA can then take two main paths, creating either CBLA through oxidation or CBC with decarbing. CBLA can then be decarbed down to CBL. Then THCA, when decarbing, will create delta-9 THC. Delta-9 THC with oxidation can then either turn into CBN or delta-8 THC. On the other hand, when THCA is oxidized, it will create CBNA, which through decarbing will then create CBN. Oh, also, CBGA through decarbing can also become CBG. In a future video, I will talk about all of these breakdowns and changes more in depth, though for now, it is totally okay if you don't fully understand this. It can take some time, though this is still a very basic chart of what can happen. I'm not going to explain it till my longer video, however, more breakdowns of cannabinoids can happen and happen to actually look something like this. All cannabinoids, whether they are in the acid form or not, as in CBD and CBDA, both have medical properties that can be similar to their counterpart. However, it is often that they act slightly differently, or really your body just takes them in slightly differently. Which leads us to broad spectrum versus isolate. Broad, broad spectrum, you can think of extracting and using all cannabinoids to receive a greater overall effect. 
When we think of our chart, a broad spectrum would include all of them. Usually, this can be seen in tinctures and CBD concentrates. Isolate is singling out one cannabinoid like CBD, then removing all of the other cannabinoids to just make it CBD. Usually, this is done through a process of distillation, or fractional distillation, which is then run through a silica filter to be purified.